Good evening, and welcome to the Putnam Valley Board of Education business meeting of June 20th, 2019. And yes, it is our last board meeting of the 2018-19 school year. Please stand and join me as we salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so our first order of business, I would like resolve to approve the minutes of the work session business meeting of June 6, 2019. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 So we're gonna move right into, into presentations and the first one will be the um, seal of biliteracy and uh, Alexis Thornton and Julia Nelson, our ENL teacher, Alexis, who is the uh, chair of our uh, World Language Department, will talk about this biliteracy seal. We're very proud this year that this will be our first opportunity to present a seal of biliteracy to one of our graduating seniors. And um, we had a great deal of help working on this. Jeanette helped us as well, and Kendall. Uh, joined Julia and Alexis, and uh, this was, and also Dorothy working on um, this opportunity for a graduate to have a special seal on her diploma. This is a New York State regulation, and, and it's an option, it's an opportunity. So that's what's happening tonight. Alexis? Good evening. Um, as Dr. Wills said, we're here representing the committee that worked to put the seal of biliteracy in place. Um, I am Alexis Thornton. I, as she said, I am a member of the World Language Department. And one of the things that is necessary is a committee in order to offer the seal of biliteracy. And you can see on the screen behind me that we had a variety of additional people who were involved. We actually need to have a minimum of a world language teacher an ELA teacher, an ENL teacher, as well as an administrator and a guidance counselor. And we were lucky enough to have some additional members who were able to partake in that committee and other people who kind of helped us along the way. So we're gonna give you just a quick overview of what is involved in earning the seal of biliteracy. Okay, so as Dr. Will said, the seal of biliteracy is an actual seal that goes onto a diploma. Um, we've also worked on getting a cord for them to wear uh, during graduation. And this indicates that they are literate in two languages, so English and a, another world language. Um, it's great because it looks awesome on college applications and job applications and just in general to show the world that you are actually literate, not just like bilingual, but actually literate in two languages. Um, so this was kind of a crash course this year in putting all of the information together. There is an application that gets filled out and sent up this to the state with our rubrics for different presentations and portfolios. And students are actually compiling in all data throughout the year in order to create a mastery portfolio and final presentation. Obviously going forward, we look forward to having kids accumulate stuff throughout their entire high school career to include in that portfolio. Okay, so I don't know if you can totally see all of this. It's kind of a lot. Um, but these are the requirements and criteria for getting the seal of biliteracy. So as you can see, there's an English column and there's a world language column. Um, and in both of them, you have to get three points. So most students um, will, will probably get a point for the first one at the top of English. Um, getting an 80 or higher on the Regents exam. Also 1C, um, completing 11th and 12th grade ELA courses with an average of 85 or higher. Um, and then some students might be able to get a three or higher on the AP test. If they don't get those three, then they have to do 1E, which is a culminating project, which is the portfolio that we were just talking about. Um, that's just the English side. Then for the world language side, they also have to get three points most of our students are most likely going to be doing the 2D, which is a Checkpoint C World Language Assessment, which is um, what Una did, our, our first seal candidate, um, and then a culminating project, so again, a portfolio, and this is all done in the world language. 
So Julia mentioned that one of the ways that students can earn points for the world language is to take a standardized test. And New York State provides a variety of tests. No matter what, students are matched based on ACTFL, which is our national council for world languages. It actually stands for the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages. And you can see that obviously students can start at a novice low where they would be as a non-native speaker in middle school. The goal for students who are earning the seal by literacy, they must score either intermediate high or advanced low on the scale at every criteria, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. Yeah, which is like actually very hard to do. <laughs> um, like it doesn't look like it's that high up in this pyramid, but it is very difficult, especially to get it in all four categories. Um, so we had our first encounter with this Apple test, which is what we did this year. Um, and there, again, there's four sections. Uh, so there's listening, where there's 24 questions, six sets of four questions. They have like pictures, and then they also have passages. Uh, reading, similar thing, 24 questions. Writing, there's six different tasks that they are asked to write about, um, anywhere from writing an email to um, talking about going to the zoo or whatever it is. And then speaking, there's someone, um, or actually a recording that's uh, spoken, and then you have to record yourself speaking back. So Yuna completed all four of those as well as the portfolio to earn her world language credits. And within that portfolio, you can see that she was able to hit on a lot of different things like introducing herself, talking about cultural comparisons between <clears throat> countries. Um, she was able to actually kind of pick out things that she wanted to highlight in her presentation and make connections that we were so happy to see just how things really interconnect, as well as being able to answer questions in both English and Mandarin. We were lucky enough to have Wendy Lee who came in to assess her Mandarin skills during the portfolio presentation, and she was also nice enough to write up her questions in English for us so that we had some idea of what she was asking. But as a non-native speaker of Mandarin, it was amazing to watch their interaction and have absolutely no idea what was going on. <laughs> All right, so um, our timeline for next year is a little bit different than our timeline for this year because we didn't really start doing all of this until around December of this school year. Um, but next year, it'll be a little bit different because we're hoping to have more than just one, one or one pilot this year. Um, so hopefully by September, we're able to get students to fill out an application, have them get a mentor, and start preparing for the Apple test. Um, October will be our first round of Apple testing. November to March, this is when they're going to meet with their mentor, create and add to their portfolio, and prepare for the test. Um, some of them might need more time creating and adding to a portfolio, especially if they haven't taken actual classes in the languages that they're, they're going to try and get the seal for, um, whereas others might need help preparing for one aspect of the test. So maybe they need more help with speaking, more help with writing, or whatever the case may be. Um, March would be our second round of Apple testing. Uh, this is in case anyone doesn't meet that um, intermediate high level, you have to wait six months until they're tested again. So this gives us an opportunity to test twice in one year in case someone gets a little bit too low in one section of the four that they need. Um, April would be creating and editing their presentation, and then May would be their portfolio presentation, similar to what we did this year. So we were lucky enough to have Yuna as our pilot this year. She challenged the seal in English and Mandarin, and we were amazed just watching her do the different parts of the test. Um, I can say collectively, it took us about six hours to test her on all four aspects, just sitting and monitoring. I think the writing test alone, we passed her poor thing back and forth twice, um, took about three hours just to complete the six writing prompts. And she was able to score not just intermediate high, but advanced low on a few of the tests as well. So we were really proud of that. Um, she did an absolutely successful presentation and is in line for the first PBHS student to earn the seal of biliteracy, which we actually announced at Senior Awards Night. 
Yeah, these are just some pictures from the presentation. Um, and this, this shows some, some of our presentation. Um, and then if anyone is more interested and wants to read up more on it, there's a whole list of resources or ask any of us on the committee or Yuna, she knows a lot about it. <laughs> I may. I, I just want to really sincerely thank Dr. Wills, Dr. Luft, and Dr. Intrieri for supporting um, the seal of biliteracy application to the state. Like Julia said, we really did start the process late, not until it was December that we had initially met and then discussed how to go about it. Um, but I really want to thank you for your support. And I remember there was a discussion about, well, there's only one student, it's mid-year. And Dr. Will says, one student matters, every student matters. And for that student, we'll do this. So I'm very proud to have been part of this. And I want to thank the committee members, all of them, for their very hard work, lots of meeting times. Um, and of course, I'm very proud of Yuna. So we are going to segue that presentation right into our first Pride in Putnam Valley. Guess who that goes to? <laughs> I would like to just uh, thank um, Alexis and Julia and all the members of the committee uh, for participating in this, and uh, Kendall for helping tremendously, um, Jeanette, because it, it takes all of us to do these things. This is a major undertaking for us. It's another one of these steps that we take in our high school to really make it a place of opportunity for every student. And um, this week we received notice that um, our school, our high school, is a recognition school by New York State. And um, this is a very important uh, recognition of our performance. And the performance is not just in academics. It's in all areas that demonstrate a culture of, uh, of learning, of both social, uh, social uh, emotional learning. For example, attendance is noted. The level of attendance that you have in the school, that's noted. Uh, the discipline is noted, whether there are too many, if there are too many suspensions, you get marked down. Uh, there are many, many areas that are looked at um, how many of your students are completing the regions? How many of your students are participating in the tests, uh, the test taking of the regions, and so on? So our school was, was, was noted, and there are 134 schools noted. Many of them are in our region, but not necessarily in this area. Mostly, uh, I would say many of them are in Westchester County. Um, but in the state, there are 134 out of about 1,000 schools in the state. So. Um, high schools. So, you know, we're very proud of, it's this kind of activity. We're proud of this. And we need to take pride in the things that our students are capable of doing and to make sure we recognize them. So tonight, Yuna, would you come up for a pride of Putnam Valley? Congratulate Una Park and recognize her as the first Putnam Valley High School student to receive the seal of biliteracy for her high level of language proficiency in Mandarin, Chinese, and English. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I, Dorothy, would you come up? Una, stay for a moment, okay? Stay for a moment. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to, and you know, it's great that you're here because I'd much rather speak to you than speak to the camera. Um, but I just wanted to, um, we're talking about the, the academic value of this and how it reflects on Putnam Valley High School, but I wanted to take a minute to tell you how it reflects on Putnam Valley Elementary School and on the bilingual learners who are new to our district, and it's very appropriate that your sister is here today. Um, but we've been talking about you, and you've been to visit us, and you read some um, bilingual books with the kindergarten children. And I just want to read for you some of the, and I'm going to give this to you, and if anyone else wants to see it, I want to read some of the things that the kids thought about when we talked about this. So this is Inara. I'm not sure if you met her. Um, but she said, Dear Yuna, my name is Inara Bustos. I am nine years old. I am in fourth grade, going into middle school. 
I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. I speak English and Spanish. I hope I win the award when I am in high school. You inspire me very much. My wish is to be like you and to be really smart like you. Yuna, congratulations for winning the Seal of Biliteracy. Just two more. I'm sorry, I have to do two more. Okay. Um, Lena says, Dear Yuna, congratulations for getting the reward and for being bilingual. I hope you have a party. That's one of my first graders. <laughs> so the first graders all think that you get a crown with this, too. So we may have to stage that somehow. Um, and then um, th this is just filled with pictures of our bilingual learners. These are our ENL students, students who receive ENL services. Of course, at Putnam Valley Elementary School, we have a lot of bilingual children who don't receive ENL services. Um, but these are just the ENL students. So. Um, Ariel and Dylan wanted you to know that they can read this book in English and Spanish. And anytime you want to come over, they are happy to read it with you with um, motions <laughs> to go with it. Um, so we give you this. And some of our ENL parents also have a gift card for you, which I don't have to present to you now, but we will thank at another you. date. Thank so you thank you for your influence. Thank you. I'm so grateful to your family for landing here in Putnam Valley and giving us the opportunity to do this. I don't know. Maybe. Did she present this? Okay, next we have a Pride in Putnam Valley for. Gavin Mitchell. Gavin, will you come up? Now, I can read. So this is really um, another one of these examples of what our students are able to do. About a week ago, I was at a Hope for Youth luncheon where Gavin received a scholarship for uh, what he has done uh, in the performing arts in the school district and his academics and so on. But not too long ago, and please come up, Ms. Intrieri, because I want you to be part of this, Dr. Intrieri, I should say. <laughs> I would like you to be part of this because this all happened when, this special, special thing happened when Gavin um, went to Dr. Intrieri and asked her if he could somehow contract and negotiate uh, and organize um, with a bluegrass group from Nashville, Tennessee, to come to Putnam Valley on their way to stardom, because Gavin obviously found them, right? Yeah. <laughs> discovered them. <laughs> discovered them. And you know, today you could discover people on YouTube. You could discover them in all sorts of places. Well, he discovered this group. And he wanted them to come to Putnam Valley to lead a workshop and performance. And he went to, Gavin went to the Dr. Intrieri and said he wanted to do this. Now, some principals might say, well, I have to ask <laughs> our business official first <laughs> before I give you an OK. But we have a principal who, <laughs> she finds a way to get things like this done. And, <laughs> um, and here's, the, here's the other part of it. Jill Figuerella always finds a way to get it done, too. And that's what's so wonderful about Putnam Valley. Everybody wants to do the right thing for students. So Dr. Intrieri helped him. and. Um, developed this program to bring to our PAC and to our students. Well, I can't just give my words in this. I must read this beautiful letter that our band uh, teacher, our band director, instrumental music, Ryan O'Dell, wrote to Ms. Intrieri, to Dr. Intrieri, and to uh, Mr. O'Connor. And here's what he wrote. And he starts by talking about how this happened. And yes, the experience was transformative for many involved, including me, and this is Ryan, on so many different levels. And yes, 
again, sitting back and listening to the high-level questions and deep inquiries our students asked during the workshop was mind-blowing. So I was there for a little while and heard this band perform called Acadian Wild. And I heard, uh, you know, how they, how they played, and then Kira uh, McGinty and Gavin Mitchell sang with them, which was incredible. And was credible for them, too. And since these musicians were so young, yes, feeling a little old today, that's not just Ryan but me, um, to hear them provide <laughs> such supportive, inform informative, and wise words back to our kids. So we had our students asking questions of this band, and then the band responding. It gave me great hope for the future in some strange way. It was, of course, of course awesome to see the number of students and teachers who voluntarily came to the performance, because this was strictly a voluntary thing. It was held in our, uh, during our community lunch period and um, available. That was some good and needed post-AP mental health for all in attendance. <laughs> so again, how thoughtful about where the kids were at, you know, what they were feeling, and how this would be something that would be so supportive. And then he says, Charlotte Danielson, would not be able to make a rubric for learning that was done. It was something one could pull data on or could be easily observed from one not in tune. It was not something one could pull data on from one not in tune with real learning and teaching our students who can elect to, to be part of this. In addition, it is truly magical and we are truly blessed to have a building leadership team that supports such activity and allows students and teachers to take risks and think out of the box. All the best intentions are dead on arrival without strong and supportive administrators like you, and this is written to Dr. Entrieri and Ms. O'Connor, Mr. O'Connor, who are willing to take risks themselves and perhaps bend a few small rules along the way. You are at your core great educators and you have a skill at knowing when taking such a risk will pay dividends. This is greatly appreciated by teachers and students. Having sat in your seat only for a short while, Ms. Drodell was an assistant principal for a year. I know it can be hard to find joy and satisfaction on a daily or even monthly basis. I could see the joy and satisfaction on your faces yesterday as we interacted and debriefed together with the kids after the sessions. It was great to see it and well earned. Thank you for all you do for me as a teacher, passionate about his work, and for our students who yesterday showed they were most passionate about their learning. I'm not sure this could happen anywhere else, and I'm most grateful to work in a school where it can, Ryan O'Dell. So when you hear things like this, you hear from the teacher, you see how the administrator, the principal, makes something happen for a student who really cares and who really learns. So congratulations, Gavin, on starting this. This was an opportunity to, uh, to solve a real world problem, if you will, to make something happen. And um, so many people were involved in, in making this happen. And we want to give you the pride in Putnam Valley for starting it all. <laughs> pride in Putnam Valley to Gavin Mitchell to congratulate and recognize you for your talent and passion that you bring to your musical studies. And Gavin will be going to the Manhattan Conservatory, a very fine um, conservatory of music and your efforts in planning and organizing an amazing musical event for the Putnam Valley High School students. And can I encourage anybody who has not heard or seen the video to do so? That's right. It was nearly impossible to pick out who the professionals were and who our students were. And that's all, uh, we have that link right mm -hmm. on our, our website. So these are all opportunities for, for the community. Next, we are uh, going to recognize two of our uh, staff members who have done something really wonderful with our sustainability initiative. If you recall, last, at our last board meeting, we had a presentation of the sustainability fair that was held uh, here at, um, at, well, at the elementary school. And you learned about our sustainability program that we've initiative that we've had over the past uh, several years, two years at least. 
And uh, by the way, all of it started, I have to say, when uh, Mr. Spittle was on the school board and said, if we're going to do this project for energy performance, then we need to have a sustainability curriculum. And so that was the impetus for a great deal of work in the area of sustainability and uh, it has really been wonderful for our district. And I, I ha we are giving this pride in Putnam Valley to uh, Jennifer Bruno from the elementary school, third grade teacher, and Ms. Liz Broas, who has done so much in our district uh, in so many areas of innovation um, and who is our library aide in our library, but ever so much more and what she has accomplished for us in the district, the maker space and science fairs and um, the most wonderful enrichments. And again, we provide a space where staff can contribute and that's what it's really about. So this is to recognize for Jennifer Bruno, wonderful efforts in planning and organizing the district's first sustainability festival which exemplified to our elementary students how to better take care of the world we live in. And to Elizabeth Bross, to recognize her wonderful efforts in planning and organizing the district's first sustainability festival, exemplifying to our elementary school students how to better take care of this world. I'm happy to see we let you wear your regular shoes today. <laughs> okay, that's it. Grant, why don't you hang for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> So as you can figure out, we have one more pride in Putnam Valley. Um, I don't think anybody here um, is a secret to the fact that the sad news is Dr. Wills will be leaving after her six-year tenure as interim superintendent. <laughs> that interim didn't really work out so much for us, luckily. Um, and we wanted to acknowledge it with the pride in Putnam Valley and, and so much more. When Dr. Wills started, um, I uh, had just become president of the Board of Education and I gave her a bouquet of blue hydrangeas from my garden as a welcoming gift. And then when we appointed her to a five-year, we thought it was gonna be a three-year, but a five-year contract, we gave her a hydrangea plant to have today. We bring her a takeaway bouquet that she can bring home with her that still have the blue hydrangeas. Um, Barbara, do you wanna talk about this or do you want me to? So, um, one of our board members has given her a, give, we have given her a book to Obama with love, joy, anger, and hope. We know uh, we will probably see quotes of this uh, in some of Dr. Will's writing in the future. I would like to read a poem that I read at, at Dr. Will's retirement party um, that I think says more than anything I could say about who Dr. Wills has been to the Putnam Valley School District. And I found it on a website about inspirational leadership that I never look at. In fact, I get emails from them all the time and I delete them because I have no time to look at them. And three months ago, I opened it and this is what I found. Um, it's called Rise and Reach. It's about moving forward no matter what. It's about not being stuck, not being stuck when we make our mistakes and or fail and not being stuck when we succeed. We move forward in either case. We rise, we reach. When things don't go the way we like, we remember to learn what we can from the result, and we rise by asking ourselves, now what? What can we do with what we know now, with what we've learned? We rise. When things go as planned, or better yet, when things go better than expected, we remember to keep reaching by asking ourselves, What's next? We acknowledge and celebrate our wins, but then we remember how we got there by pushing things, by reaching. Rise and reach. Anybody who has worked with Dr. Wills as we had on the Board of Education knows that if there's a problem, she is going to work it and worry it 
and possibly obsess over it and send four million emails about it until it is solved. She is gonna rise over that problem. And then once we solve it, there's nine more emails about nine more things she wants to take on. So sometimes we can actually revel for about four or five minutes before we move on to other things. But it is why we had the Pride and Fund and Valleys we had today. And it is why we have, um, we're, we're the district we are today. So we would like to present the Pride and Putnam Valley, and it reads, and you'll be hearing it in a little while in our resolution, whereas Dr. Francis Wills has provided dedicated service, leadership, and guidance to the Putnam Valley Central School District since August 1st, 2013, strengthening the district's academic programs and providing a well-rounded educational experience for all students to ensure that they leave school prepared and committed to lead and serve in their community and society. And whereas Dr. Will's employment agreement with the district of superintendent of school concludes on June 30th, 2019, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education and the Putnam Valley Central School District hereby recognize Dr. Will's years of dedicated service, hard work and commitment to the school district and its students and wishes her good health, happiness and contentment in the ensuring years. We know you're gonna keep rising and reaching. Congratulations and thank you. just say that I am so very grateful to be in this community and to have had these years with you as really a crowning achievement of my career. I can't ask for more uh, from the love and affection I have felt here and the willingness to accept what I wanted to bring to the district. And. Um, this is what I believe in. I've lived my life this way. And to see um, the team I've had, I see people here from my district office, and um, I thank you all um, and everyone in the community because uh, it was an opportunity to give, and there is no greater joy for me than this. None. Thank you. So we're going to. So we'd like to take a brief five minute recess to celebrate with all of our Pride in Putnam Valley recipients today and everybody in the audience have a little cake, a little juice, and then we'll get back to work. Innovative Classroom Academy. Weren't you just up there? <laughs> so, I'll give you a quick intro, right? Take I'll give away, you a chance to get a little more nervous. Yes, yes. we will. Can you trip it up, you trip it up. up. You're taller than Fran. There you go. So, that's fair. <laughs> that, would, that makes sense. But it's in position. <laughs> it's in the right place now, though. You're, you're all ready to go. It's preloaded. No. Not yet. No. That's because oh, I'm talking. Whoa, you wait. You okay. Go. I'm going to take a little step. So for the last year, I've had the opportunity to work with several teachers who participated in a professional learning community around innovative uh, classroom spaces and uh, engaging instructional techniques. So. I've had the opportunity to be able to sort of provide updates throughout the school year of the things that we were working on, but really what I wanted to do was provide an opportunity for some of the teachers themselves to come and present on what this past year of um, professional work has meant to them. So two of the individuals are here this evening. One was unable to attend, so she is uh, virtually going to present and actually uh, created a video of herself giving her presentation. Now, each of the participants gave this presentation during our last meeting um, at the beginning of the month. Uh, and it was really a great opportunity for us to reflect on the year and really set the course for our second cohort, which teachers have already applied for the second cohort of the Innovative Classroom Academy, as well as the such a tight-knit group formed throughout this first year that the teachers actually requested to continue to meet. So the first cohort will continue to meet a couple times throughout next year and will work to help support the second cohort, their colleagues. So um, I'll introduce Jen, Ms. Bruno 
Who's going to go first? Thank you. Hello. OK, so um, I'm going to talk about what shifting was like in my classroom. I teach third grade at the elementary school. Um, when I first started this Innovative Classroom Academy, I had to kind of take a step back and say, you know, why are we here? Why are we all here? And it's really about our future. And it's about our students. And it's about getting them to be responsible, respectful citizens. Um, so looking at that, um, just thinking ahead, we're really trying to create life learners. And in order to do that, we have to do certain things. So one of those things that we have to do is empower them. We have to empower our students um, from a young age up to know that what they think matters and how they feel matters. And if we do that, then we can really start to see them begin to do different things. So in the beginning, in my mind, I was thinking, oh, here's another thing for us to do, just what we need, one more initiative. But I went, ooh, I feel like maybe I might start to go a little crazy. Let's just see what happens here. Then I took a step back and I said, you know what? It's really not an extra thing. It's more about shifting. It's about looking at things through a different lens. And through that lens that I looked at, I said to myself, I need to empower myself. I need to be able to empower myself to help my students empower themselves. So I really had to take a step back and I had to let go of certain control, which was very, very frightening. But I decided to jump right in. So here are some things that I decided to do. Um, in the beginning, when you start the Innovative Classroom Academy, you really start to look at things differently and you start to question the why and the how. So why do students do certain things? Why are certain students more engaged than others? How can we get all, in student, all students to be engaged? So I am still at this start sign. There is still a long road ahead. And although I've been doing this all school year, I still feel like I'm at the beginning. And that's OK. So I started with voice and choice. I really started to give students more voice and choice within the classroom so that they have more opportunity to make decisions for themselves. To do that, I had to trust them. I had to trust that they could make good decisions and that they could learn from their mistakes. So we had to build this trust together. And it was a little frightening in the beginning of the school year. I've always prided myself of my classroom being an open space where students can come and feel safe and comfortable and learn and really be them best, their best selves. But when I took a step back and I looked at it, it was more as if this was my world and they were just living in it. I created everything in that classroom. I set up the furniture. I decided what went on the walls. I decided who sat where. So I wanted them to feel like their thoughts and their feelings mattered. So this is what my classroom looked like at the end of school year last year. And I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it's very colorful. There's a lot of space. You know, there's a lot of accessibility for students and things like that. But if you notice, it really was my design. It was my thought of where things should go and how things should run. This is what it looks like now. However, this has changed about 10 times throughout the school year. I have changed the layout of the classroom with the student's help. There was one point where I had some, that, that larger pub table was in the center of the classroom and all the kids loved to sit at it and that noodle table, which is that horseshoe table, was in the corner and where this weird looking black ball chair is, nobody would sit there. And I finally said to the students, why isn't anybody sitting in this corner of the classroom? And the kids said, it's really hard for us to see and we don't like our back that way. And I was like, oh, that's a really good point actually. I didn't even think of that. So one of the kids said, why don't you just turn that table around a little? And I was like, you're genius. And so I did and then everybody wanted to sit there again. So if you get them to kind of reflect and look at things with you, you really do get insightful things that aren't out of this world, but it's really nice to get their feedback. So I really started with something called smart spots. I did not assign seating in my classroom this year. They walked in on the first day of school and I said, pick a spot where you think you might be more, most comfortable. Pick a spot where you feel like you can learn your best. And these were some of the things that we went through. So you have to stay on task, make safe choices, act appropriately, reflect and move when needed. And that was the the biggest part of this whole thing, and to take care of your spot. So we started using this, and this is how I felt. <laughs> I was like, I cannot believe I am not assigning kids seats in this classroom right now. Um, so I kind of felt this way, but I've really found that students come in and they really think about their choices. I feel like they have 
um, when I talk to them about how actions have reactions and consequences could be either positive or negative, depending on what your choice is, they've really decided and really thought hard, and I've seen more respect and responsibility. I've seen more respect for each other. I've seen more respect for the classroom materials. Um, you might be thinking, how do you decide where the kids sit? Does one kid sit in one seat every day? No. And if someone sits in that same seat, another student has the right to go over them and say, hey, I didn't get to sit there yet. May I sit there? You would think that there would be all these arguments. I've had no arguments in the classroom. They are extremely respectful of each other. They'll say, oh, you didn't sit there? Sure, here you go. I'll go find another seat. And it's very nice to see that. There's also a lot more responsibility that I've seen with them, and I've really started to see children begin to grow. The best part about it as well is that it really provides movement for students. In the middle of a lesson, if I need a student that needs to get up and take a walk and go and work somewhere else, they can, and it does not disrupt or take away from the learning, which is quite surprising, <laughs> so it's very nice. Um, I've had a lot of collaborative um, pieces come into it as well. You'll see this little teeny table. The students just love to sit around it. I've had students say to me, I feel like I'm at home. I feel so comfortable. I'm just sitting here reading. I'm doing whatever I need to do. They're able to work um, easily with each other. You'll see our little reading nook that we have here with some pillows and things. Students love to sit there. There's a limit to three students. If three students are sitting there and they've sat there before, they just talk to each other and they really are working on being respectful communicators. The other thing that I implemented was a student success station. So instead of me hanging everything on the walls, I gave them the option. What do you want to hang up? What are you proud of? And they are very picky about what they will put on the wall. You would be surprised. They just don't want to hang anything up. So when they do hang something up, it starts a conversation with other students. I had one student hang up a spelling quiz that he did not do very well on, um, but he was very proud of it. And another student said, why are you hanging that up? You got like a 50 something. And he's like, those words were really hard for me. And I'm proud of that. And so the other kid was like, yeah, okay, cool. That sounds good. You know, so they, they have conversations about the things that they feel proud of and that, they're in lo that they love. Um, the teamwork that I've seen has been very valuable as well. Um, typically, I do let students pick their partners or their small groups and things like that. And sometimes you always have an issue or there's always a problem or there's always a battle. Um, and I've found that through this, giving them that voice and choice of if you can't do it and you need my help, that's fine, I can help you, but next time I'll be picking your choice for you. And they're like, oh no, we don't want that. Like, let's do this, we can do this together. And that's something that they've come to see is that we do it together as a group. The other part that I've changed is my homework. I've given them a lot more choice in the homework activities that they can do. So instead of doing both full pages in math, I might say to them, pick two out of the four choices on the front and one on the back, because typically the back page is more challenge questions. Some of the kids will say, what two are you going to pick? Or what three are you going to pick? And then one kid says, oh, I'm going to read through them all and see which ones are easier for me. So now I know you're reading through all the problems. I know you're thinking about the process on how to answer them. And then you're choosing the two that you're going to show me your best work on. Um, same thing with spelling, I give them an option, kind of like a little menu of different activities that they can do, and they get to pick the ones that are best for them. I have students that are really interested in writing and creating stories, so they use their spelling words to do that, where I have other students that like to create word searches with their things. Technology was another piece that I tried to implement a little bit more, so I started using Seesaw, which is basically like a kid's Facebook, where they get to post different things that they're proud of, and then the parent gets an automatic alert, and that's really opened up the communication at home. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from parents saying that they're really happy about it because now when they get that alert and they see the picture of Malala or the, par like the passage that we were reading and they can say, oh, tell me about this. What were you doing today? Instead of the, what did you learn in school today? Nothing. So now there's that open communication, which is really nice. HyperDocs is another little piece that I've implemented as well to give the students a little bit more voice and choice. So instead of them writing about something that they learned, they can create a Flipgrid video or something like that. And they're very into that. And then finally, the last piece. Um, every year, I've typically had a little quick share at the end of the day. And this year, we took it a step further. So instead of me just teaching the students all the time, I really put it out there to them. And I said, if there's something that you can connect with outside of school and what we're learning, you can have your parent email me, a video, anything like that. So I've had several videos this year. One specific one was of a boy, we were learning about Japan, and he had a family member that visited Japan every year. So he had his mom film him 
explaining the different things that he got from that person that had to do with Japan. We showed it in class, and then the kids were able to ask him questions. So it was, it's a really nice thing for them to be able to do. Um, and they really seem to love it. And they, they're very engaged when they're learning from their peers. So this is what I have to keep telling myself. I have to keep telling myself, you can do it. You can do it because they can do it. And it's just been a transformative year. And there's so many more things that I want to jump into next year already. Um, so I really can't wait for the next school year to be started, even though this one is just winding down. Um, and finally, I just want to thank all of you and Dr. Luft and everybody who really brought this Innovative Classroom Academy to Putnam Valley because it has been instrumental. I feel like I am a better educator because of it. Um, and I am by no means anywhere past that starting line. I'm still there, but I look forward to the journey ahead. Thank you. I think when I come back, I want to be a third grader in your classroom <laughs> in the next life. And now we're watching a virtual presentation? Not yet. Uh, no, we have one more live. Oh. Not a virtual. Good evening. Hello again. Um, so as I, you know, because uh, I was already up here, I'm Julia Nelson. I teach ENL at the high school. So uh, my innovative classroom looks a bit different than Miss Bruno's, um, but I think that's okay because we're in different schools, we have different groups of kids, and they have different needs. Um, so when I was making this presentation, I didn't really know how to title it because I think when I first came into it, I thought of it more of like a teacher and sort of self-reflection thing, but that was kind of silly because everything we do is really about the students and how like figuring out how to best serve them and how to, how to get them motivated and ready for the world. And ultimately that changed the community in my classroom. Um, so this is what I grew up learning in a classroom that's just rows and columns. Um, I didn't know, I didn't have any deviation to that throughout my entire, I think K through 12 probably. It probably wasn't until maybe even college that I had like round tables, <laughs> I guess maybe in lab or something. Um, and so coming to teach with this setup in the classroom, it wasn't until I like really tried to make a collaborative setting that I realized this does not work for that. This is not a place where kids come into the classroom, see this, and think that it's a place to collaborate and work together. If you see this as, as a student, you're walking in and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to be working independently and I'm going to be passive because I'm sitting here alone facing the teacher. So that means the teacher is doing all the work, the teacher is speaking, the teacher is performing, and so the student doesn't really have much to do except sit there and listen. Um, and I think also that setup, that rows and columns, <laughs> kind of just makes it seem like all the students are the same, which we all know isn't true. They all have different needs. They all, you know, some of them need to be walking around. Some of them need to be in a different space. Some of them need to feel more at home, more comfortable if they're going to succeed and um, be motivated. Uh, so my first step this year was talking to my co-teachers because as an ENL teacher, I co-teach a lot of the day. And so I knew if I was going to make any real change, it was going to have to include them. Um, and I think I, I think I overwhelmed them in the beginning. <laughs> um, I think I came in way too strong um, and was just kind of like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to change this. We're going to do that. And I, they were not as open to it because I came on so strong. So that was very much my fault. And it was what, reading the one of the books that they provided with us called Shift This by Joy Kerr really showed me that the most important thing you can do in changing a culture and a community is to make small changes gradually because then no one's overwhelmed. No one feels like they're out of control and people can like, you know, gradually get used to it. Um, and also, I think, 
most importantly, when you have small changes, it doesn't mean that the result isn't going to be big. It just means that it's going to take a little bit longer. So kind of like what Jen was saying, you know, I'm definitely not up at that top yet. I took some steps this year, and I'm still very much at the bottom. Um, but at the end of the year, it was really cool to reflect back and say, wow, even though I didn't do anything like really massive, it feels different and it feels good in the classroom. It feels better. Uh, so the first small incremental shift that I made was this cushion seat that went right on the counter for students to sit in. Um, I just got some, some regular foam, put some fabric over it, and plopped it up on next to the wall. And I said, OK, we're just going to do this today to my co-teachers. I'm just going to put it up there. And I'm just, the kids will, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and when the kids came in, of course, they all like flocked to it. They're like, what's this? Can I sit here? Can I sit here? Wait, but if he's sitting there, I need to sit there. Um, so we had to kind of step back. And it was sort of a way for students to be positively motivated and reinforced. Um, and it didn't have to just be academic, so it wasn't like, oh, you're the smartest kid in the class, so you get to sit here. It's a matter of if you're making positive change, then you have the opportunity to go explore where you might feel better, where you might be more motivated and pay attention more. And what I noticed was that it sort of changed their perspective, and I mean that in a metaphorical but also a very physical sense because they were sitting on a very different side of the room than I think they really have ever sat before. And so it was really cool because, um, you know, they were sitting up there, they had a different angle of, of the teacher, they had a different angle of their, their peers, and they, they were like wanted to be more involved in the class just because they were sitting in a, in a different seat, which was very cool. Um, so then my next small change was station teaching. And I did that quite a bit, but we really upped our game this year. It was very cool. Because the reality is, if you have two teachers in a room, you're automatically going to be able to get and reach these students more if you're in a smaller group. And that's, that's just how it is. If I have a class of 24 kids, if I can make three groups and then have a class of eight in front of me, that is going to allow me to speak to the kids. It's going to allow the kids to speak to me, to each other, and feel comfortable. Um, I obviously work with ENL students, and for them to be in a small group where they can feel comfortable speaking and talking to each other and asking questions without feeling like everyone's watching them is so, so important. Um, and so our station teaching really, really was awesome this year. Um, so that was awesome. Then we, I, well, I got my actual furniture, uh, <laughs> which again, this isn't like a huge deal, right? It's not like I totally reinvented the room like Jen did. <sighs> um, but but <laughs> this small change really helped the kids because they walked in and immediately said, oh my gosh, this is like a Starbucks. And I was like, yeah, exactly. It's cool. <laughs> um, and again, so we're... They're going from rows and columns to something like this, and automatically they walk in and they think, this is a collaborative setting. This isn't a place where I'm going to be passive and where I'm going to just be listening to the teacher because here I am with my peers in a collaborative little table. Plus, they're higher up and they just like they, they just love it. They can't get over it, really. It's, it's great. Um, and then the final piece of furniture was this couch, and I was a little hesitant to get it because, you know, who knows, they might fall asleep, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but it was actually, honestly, my favorite part because it made it feel very homey. And it was a place where a lot of students, like I, I had students in between classes, before class started, during lunch, running into my room and like curling up on the couch. like like high schoolers just like curling up into a ball on the couch, whether they had a bad day or whether they just needed to decompress in some way. That was most important to me because they felt safe and they felt like they had a place to go. Um, so I love, I love the couch. <laughs> um, so next year, so those were, those were my small changes for this year. Uh, but next year, I really want to work on grading. And we talked about this as, as a whole group quite a bit in the Innovative Classroom Academy. Um, but it really hit home when 
I was, I was conferencing with a ninth grader about his grade on a test, and he did fine, he did normal, um, it was fine. And he, he immediately just stopped me and said, why, why do I have to take tests? And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> we have to, we have standards, we have regions, we have, like, you have to, it's just, it's part of life, it's, you know, you've, you've been in school, it's just part of it, you know? And he was like, yeah, but, but like, tests aren't where I do best. And I was like, that's true, okay. He was like, I need to communicate. I need to be talking with someone. I need to be talking to my peers. I hate tests and I don't do well on them and I don't think it really shows how I best understand the material. And I didn't really know what to say to him because <laughs> I was like, that's a really good point. <laughs> um, so, in a response, I'm going to work next year on trying to be more wholesome in our, in our grading and you know, work more on portfolios and work more on the whole kid and not just what they can do on a test. Um, so again, thank you for this opportunity. It's been awesome. I'm so excited for next year and working more on this. Um, so thanks for listening. <laughs>
And again, I kept a lot of supplies in there that the kids were able to have access to. Um, and it just freed up some room in the band room, which is also a very small space, um, which was great. The kids had more room to move around. They felt more like it was their place, space, which was awesome. Um, as far as other furniture goes, I did want to try and make some quiet spaces, which I know is kind of funny in a band room setting. Um, and that's again, still kind of a work in progress. Um, I don't really have any, that's not my classroom, I don't really have any specifics to show you with that. Um, but again, it's a work in progress. I didn't expect this to take one year, so I'm still working on it. Uh, so that's what happened with the quiet spaces. It didn't really go exactly how I was thinking, um, but we'll get there eventually. Um, the other thing that is super exciting is the bond pass, so we'll have a little bit more space to work with in the coming years in the PBMS music area, which is very, very, very exciting. Um, so another thing that we'll keep moving forward with. <clears throat> so the other portion uh, that I felt of the innovative classroom, besides the <clears throat> physical setting, was just some philosophical teaching strategies. And this is where I really felt I um, pushed myself to go out of my comfort zone. Um, so um, I taught eighth grade this year, which was kind of new for me. And I gave the students a lot of choice in what music they played. We did a lot of brainstorming together. We did a lot of work together to come up with what would be appropriate for them to perform. A lot of the songs on each of their concerts were songs that they wanted to do. I felt like there was a lot more student investment in the process because they were playing stuff that they enjoyed. Um, so I thought that was really successful and I was inspired to do that by the Innovative Classroom Academy. Another thing I started doing in both my band and my math labs was stations, um, which I didn't really think was possible in a band class, but I did it and I really, the kids really enjoyed it too. So I would work with one group on stage, we would play our instruments, it was loud, but it worked. Um, and then other students would be down in the cafeteria on different sides doing sometimes it was you know reading flashcards sometimes it was using the music first program sometimes it was um working on another project um and they were able to move from station to station and i, I really enjoyed it and i think the kids did too so i'm really excited to continue that next year um, Another thing that I started was passion projects. We talked about Genius Hour in uh, Innovative Classroom Academy, and so I did passion projects at the end of the year after the concerts. Both my fifth grade and my eighth grade worked on them, um, and I got some really cool things. So basically, like I said, they could work on and look into, do some kind of, any kind of project. It just had to in some way be related to music. Um, so my eighth grade, and then they presented them. Um, my eighth grade did a lot of, um, so we shared performances with each other. Some of them did some research online about um, different videos that they found interesting. A couple of them, a bunch of them actually did performances. Um, so they would learn a song on an instrument, sometimes not even an instrument they typically played in band, which was really cool. So there's a couple playing the, Phone, and then I have a couple kids who made um, a uh, bottle band. Which again was loud but a lot of fun. So that was my eighth grade. The fifth grade did more, a little bit more research based. Um, so a lot of them did how music relates to sports, how they see it in sports events, or how it affects performance in sports. Um, a lot of them did some dance related stuff. Some people did um, how music fits into their religion, which I thought was really interesting. Um, family related stuff, how does my, do my parents like the same music as me? Um, and then a lot of kids did it in relation to animals. And a couple kids went home and played music for their animals and took videos of it and, and did experiments, so, which was so cool. And I'm so glad that I was able to do this with them. Um, so overall, um, I started this year open-minded and excited, but also kind of nervous. I feel like I've pushed myself outside of um, 
what normally a band teacher would be doing and I'm really excited to continue to push um, in different directions and make new strides with my students. Um, so this is me being stressed. It's stressful, but it's also great. Um, and I love this, creativity takes courage. Um, I feel like all of the uh, members of the cohort really took some courageous steps this year, went outside of our comfort zone, took a step outside the box. Um, and I'm really, really thankful that I was able to be part of that process. So this is my last slide just to say to anybody who's considering doing the Innovative Classroom Academy, do it. It's a really great experience. Um, and I loved getting to work with people who I normally wouldn't get to work with. It was a really wonderful experience. Thank you so much. I hope the rest of the board meeting goes well and I'll see you all soon. So I just want to point out that you heard from an elementary, a middle school, and a high school teacher, and that this cohort of teachers spanned obviously all three buildings in multiple content areas. As you see right there, we had a music teacher as well. Um, I just want to emphasize uh, the success of this group is really about utilizing or, or providing an opportunity, a time and a space for the collective knowledge of teachers to come together and work. And I believe strongly that our greatest, uh, most powerful professional development is when our teachers work directly with teachers. And the 15 teachers that were part of this cohort will tell you the first time we met, we sat down and we said, well, what do we want to talk about all year? All right, what do we want to focus on? And really that group of teachers went through an exercise, established an essential question that they wanted to focus on throughout the year. And that was our year's work. We bought a couple $10 books to help us along the way. We threw a, a tiny bit of money at furniture, as you see. We sort of bought a couple desks here, a couple desks there. Some people robbed the furniture of their own house um, to save a few dollars. But it's not, there's lots of districts that spend tens of thousands of dollars on consultants or spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on furniture and then figure out um, how to use all that stuff. and this group of teachers really came together and they decided on their path and they learned from each other and really the input um, the the extrinsic motivations were very minimal and really i just want to compliment all of their work throughout the year and how excited i am to see the work continue uh, both with their cohort and a new cohort next year thanks I just wanted to, uh, to note that um, this kind of thinking and um, this different lens um, that we see looking at, at teaching and learning is really the key to the next stage for our growth as a school district. And uh, I think we really are in that place right now where this is happening and uh, this is an area of strength that our new superintendent brings that I'm very excited about because uh, already they're planning for a superintendent's conference day that will be teacher-led, teacher-facilitated, and um, this is really um, a very, uh, what I see as the opportunity for cognitive diversity. This is, this is something I believe strongly in um, because really it's diversity of thought that allows people to create new things, new ideas, and, and giving that opportunity to our students is the key to their success, really, to be able to see that having different ideas, different lenses, multiple ways of thinking, that will create a solution in their lives, with, you know, in their classes, and it's really something as, uh, you know, as a nation that we see how important it is to understand the diversity of thought. So it's, well, it's a and, wonderful And that's process. exactly what I was thinking watching. What I liked was the thoughtfulness and how different. Um, I work in a school that embraced problem-based learning and bought round tables for everybody. Some people cannot be at a round table, um, especially if there's only room for four people at that round table and they're spread out all over the place and his stuff is touching mine. And so the fact that there was not a one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. and that there really was thought to it is what makes it effective. You can go from rows to round tables, you're still pigeonholing kids. So. And it's all based on student voice, right. student choices, 
which is what we're trying to prepare our students for uh, in their lives. Well, and more than student choices, it's teacher choice. Mm -hmm. And if, if the, through our administration is modeling that it's okay for teachers to have choice, and teachers model being afraid, being nervous, not being like, I got this, I'm totally in control, and saying, I'm not sure, let's, let's talk about it, let's work it out. It opens up the possibility for somebody else to try that. So, and if we're not modeling what we're asking students to do, then, then they'll never pick up on it. So, like, I just think it's great. My goal was to have a classroom that was quiet when the superintendent came by. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time Fran walked past my classroom, my students were standing on benches dancing. And I saw her go by and back up, and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> but Obviously she, she said, loved it. this was good. I was yeah. dancing with you know, her. So, <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's, it's great, and I'm excited. So. All right, Maureen, you're going to, and Jill, you're going to excite us with the first reading of a, uh, first reading of a policy? This has to be probably the least exciting yes. thing Wait, ever. First, wait, just stop for a minute. First of all, this policy was adopted back in 2016, and the only difference is these four lines here, which are in red. So the reason, there's no reason to read it twice, is right. that we've adopted the whole policy, except this is one little piece of clarification. So what, we, what we've done already is just adopted the resolution to create the reserve, but we have to amend our policy that exists in the district for all our reserves to include the reserve that we established. And it's a sub-reserve of the, um, what is known as the retirement contributions. Uh, we had one already established for civil service employees, the non-teaching staff, and now there is one um, established for the teacher's retirement system, which is a new uh, law um, Years established. Years in the making. What's that? Years in the making. And Years in the it. making and finally um, able to, um, uh, it's one of our biggest liabilities is the teacher's retirement um, contributions that the district makes. It's one of the biggest um, lines in our budget. So finally, um, this has been established by the state that we can do this now. So that's all this is doing is amending our already existing policy to include that information. So I'm asking that we waive the second reading because it is the end of the school year. We have established the reserve. We want to be able to utilize it um, at the close of the year. And Jill, were you given the choice to use red versus any color in terms of what you thought would be? Sorry, I'm still an innovative. That was left, to make it exciting. Haven't left the innovative classroom yet. Okay. Is this going to take forever? No, I'm not going to I'm just going to show it. To okay. The that we're getting there. Fran, you're not going to read this whole thing, right? <laughs> no. I, 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 just, I just said to Dr. Wills, this is not going to take forever, is it? And then you just said you're not going to read the whole thing, are you? It's going to be a test after. Oh, we have copies? That's so sweet. Fantastic. I did. Jill's, Jill's handing it out. And if you can read that, we're going to give you another job. <laughs> oh, yeah. good Lord. Is there an eye doctor? All of this is... This could be larger than this, right? Yeah. This doesn't have to be this small. Wait a minute. How do I make this larger? This is Command plus. Why is this? <laughs> it's really, they really don't want me to read anything. Dan, Dan help us, please. The other codes are the same thing. Those are updates. Why is it so small? This is a lot of codes. This is a lot of codes. Well, clearly. Uh, I'm not going to read these anyway. What I'm going to do is say to you that in the beginning of the year, we created district goals. And there are many goals that we created in the district uh, for all of our schools. Um, we started with creating a culture that encourages and supports student agency within a safe and import, uh, supportive environment. And uh, we went through a number of different uh, areas uh, in the district to show how we did this culture building. And what this document provides for our community and for the board 
are not just the goals, but how these outcomes were achieved. And uh, what we want to do is demonstrate to the public uh, that we do think about this during the year and we do make sure that we provide the outcomes. So uh, I, I just want to make sure the public knows this is posted on our website and you will be able to see, for example, in creating a culture, It's not. Moving. No, it's not. <laughs> Let's see, this doesn't work. Okay. So this is really making it very, very difficult for me to to show the to show you, but um, we are. We provide in our goals document, we provide the outcomes for each of the major goals that we have identified, that we identified in the beginning of the year. Okay, so we start, we started with culture. It's working now. So for example, some, some of these uh, goals included um, the unit lunch, for example, at the high school. Uh, we looked at, in the middle school, well, I could see that I am a dinosaur <laughs> because it's not working Maybe for me. Maybe your hands are cold. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> now you're making things up. But um, you will get your wish. I clearly cannot. <laughs> <laughs> See, the universe is a wonderful, yes. wonderful place. But um, what's important is that you will see, as you go through the document, you will see, when you can open it up on your screens at home, <laughs> how each of the goals is listed and some of the achievements we have had this year. Uh, just for example, the sustainability festival that we talked about, um, celebrating students through Pride in Putnam Valley, all of these areas where we uh, have attempted to address student needs and student achievement, not just academically, but also in terms of social, uh, socioeconomic, I'm sorry, social emotional uh, areas <laughs> as well. Um, looking at different ways to have effective impact on student learning. This innovative classroom academy is one of those goals. That was uh, our goal three that we have. And goal four was creating spaces that are learner centers and visually reflect our culture. You're sitting in the library here that was created for that purpose. You have the classrooms that are being, uh, are being innovated to, uh, to create spaces for student collaboration and student voice. See, these are the kinds of things. We had a later start this year that changed how we think about, about school. We have the unit lunch at the uh, high school. We have the IB program that we've uh, started this year. There are so many areas uh, where we have reached in for students, not just in terms of academics, but as the whole student, holistically. And uh, student voice, we celebrated that tonight. And I, I hope that you will take a look at our district goals uh, so that you see all of the areas where we have achieved. I mean, for example, passing the bond, this was a huge effort this year, the work of the facilities committee and how that brought the community. That's one of, one of our goals was engaging the community, how we engage the community through listening sessions and all of these opportunities. So every one of the goals that we created early in the year in September we have found a way to provide outcomes for the community that identify what we have achieved here in the school district. 
And uh, I hope you will take a look at this because every one of these school buildings has also contributed. So there are district goals and there are building goals. You know, one of the goals was to audit our guidance uh, uh, program. And indeed, that happened and now we are adding a guidance counselor where we need one in order to meet both the state regulations and our own needs. So every one of the goals that we set for this year has been uh, achieved with an outcome um, that demonstrates to the community that we are accountable. Uh, you, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out in, uh, in my superintendent's report, we talked about um, academic goals and achievement on the uh, state, uh, the state tests, the state assessments. Well, we're seeing tremendous growth. Uh, we just looked at this year's raw scores that came back, and we are seeing that we are really near the top um, in our math, and our ELA has improved significantly. So when you see the results this year, and you look at a, a five or six year trend, you'll see how much work has gone into making that happen. I see Mick Coleman here, he's presented, in, uh, he's presented his math work that he's done with our students, and indeed, a tremendous amount of effort has gone into it, and it's showing. In fact, if we had 95% of our students taking the tests at the elementary school right now, we would be a recognition school because of the kind of growth we've made. That's the only thing that holds you back. That's the threshold is the 95%. So th that's what you'll find in our district goals document. And um, I hope you will take an opportunity to look at it because it represents a huge amount of work from everyone in the schools. Thank you, Gross. And I have a question um, both for you and I guess and Dr. Luft is that um, some of the goals, um, the outcomes are procedural that will continue. Um, but will we use this document as a bouncing off point for next year? Like for example, um, my eye just happened to land on develop digital portfolio program. Um, Mrs. Domain met with all ninth graders and took first steps on portfolio implementation. Will we know if we're gonna continue to do that, if it was effective, were yes. kids using it on their own? That's, that would be a great opportunity for a presentation to the board on that program. I know uh, Dr. Entreri is here, and we've talked about that has started with our freshmen having a digital portfolio. So this program is... Right, that just is... is it, are, which, and then, are, which weren't, aren't going to be continued, are going to be continued? Yes, I, I'm sure that that will be discussed. Now, there's going to be a retreat, I believe, with the administrators, yep. and talking about goals for next year, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that this would be the starting point for that. So... I guess to just to clarify, certainly the, the last thing we're going to do is lose all of the good work that's been started, and we'll certainly keep track of all that stuff that's going on. I think philosophically, I probably have a different view of the goal-setting process. Um, last year, you may remember, I probably inserted myself too soon, and, and we ended up with one goal of building relationships. Um, this year, as referenced by the 24 pages, I lost that battle. <laughs> Fran said it was her last year and she wanted her goals. Um, <laughs> but I think it's important. Uh, I mean, all I'm of these, the works. right, all of these things are obviously happening <laughs> and it's all really good work. And I, I think it's important for us to have one or two unifying goals that everyone's going to do and where everyone's going to strive towards. And all of these other things, many of which are action items that I know the buildings are going to do, um, regardless of whether we call it a goal or, or just we say, listen, we're gonna, we want you to continue that good work and update, well, we can update the board halfway through the year and decide how it's going. So I think it may look a little different, but certainly I don't want in any way to value the tremendous amount of work that's been accomplished um, by our administrators, our teachers, and our students throughout the past year. And we'll certainly come up with a way to continue to track and support uh, these initiatives through until they're complete. Great. And for those who are, uh, would be looking online to read this um, comprehensive document, which really is a greatest hits of the year. Uh, it truly is, you know, we, we go day by day, meeting by meeting, and we presentation after presentation, and happening in the classroom, what's happening every day. When you actually look at the documents, it's like, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of it's really new it's and really cool. innovative and really impactful. So 
um, while we joke about reading the whole thing, it really is an amazing read and, and kind of our own report card on what we've set out to do and what uh, parts we've been able to completely do uh, and, and accomplish and others that still are, are works in progress. I, I am, it is also conveniently color coded by building. So I think, you know, if you only have interest in one of the buildings because that's where your student is, feel free to go to that blue. There's two different blues, but uh, I really, it's, it's quite a read and it's kind of impressive what uh, can get done in 10 months, essentially. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now with about 24 hours or less till graduation, I'd like to turn it over to our student representatives. It's like exactly 24 hours from the end of the ceremony. That's right. Mm -hmm. In the sunshine. They will not be students 24 hours from the end. While freshmen, sophomores, and juniors are taking their finals and regents, seniors had different plans. Thursday, June 6, seniors and their partners had prom at Anthony's Pier 9 from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Everyone looked so good and had a great time. Monday, June 10, there was the senior breakfast and yearbook handout from 8.30 to 10 a.m. A yearbook was signed by the senior class and will be given to Elias' family. Tuesday, June 11th, 10 a.m., there was the CTC safety presentation and personal safety seminar in the PAC. This is when drugs and alcohol abuse were talked about and the legality of it. Wednesday, June 10th, I mean June 12th, Putnam Valley Elementary School cap and gown walkthrough for the seniors was at 10 a.m. It was quite an emotional day to see how far we've come. We were able to see our elementary school teachers and give one rose to a special teacher who made an impact on our life. June 12th was also the breakfast of champions for track and softball at 7.50 a.m. in the high school cafeteria to celebrate these teams and how far they went in the championships. This day was also the senior awards and scholarships. These were given to high achieving senior students due to their GPAs, majors, sports, arts, and community service. June 13th was the rotor voter registration. Mr. Scampoli showed high school seniors how to register to vote and how important voting is. It was also the junior senior ice cream social and the senior slideshow created by Joe Diodona. Senior students had to email Joe pictures they wanted in the slideshow to be featured. The pictures range from kindergarten to now, our senior year. Mr. Scampoli also gave a speech where students had to say goodbye to each other. However, he wanted us not to say goodbye to our friends, but rather people we haven't talked to in a while or people we don't talk to in general. I personally like talking to people that I normally wouldn't. June 13th was also the powder puff game at 6.30. This was a senior versus junior game of flag football, and I'm proud to say that the seniors won. <laughs> the seniors' choice of where the money made from the, for the donation was the Ronald McDonald House. June 21st, tomorrow, will be the senior graduation ceremony at 7 p.m. at the football field where the seniors will say goodbye to Putnam Valley High School. And June 26th will be the last day of school and testing for all high school students. Um, this week, 10 of our science research program students have been attending an international competition called Genius Olympiad. In order to qualify for such a high level competition, they had to write a 20 page university level research paper after performing an original experiment. Thousands of students applied from 76 countries. Out of the thousands of applicants, only 789 projects were, select were selected, and we're very happy to announce that 10 of those accepted students are from our very own Putnam Valley High School. Throughout this week, our students have presented their research professionally and have competed against all of the other students from around the world, while representing Putnam Valley on an international level. The award ceremonies have not quite occurred yet, but we are anxious to know how the students did. 
Congratulations to all of them for being accepted into this prestigious competition and for representing our town, school, state, and country. I would also like to note that, the, that last year was the first year that we had students uh, get accepted to this competition. We had two. And this year we have seen a significant growth to 10 students. This is a reflection of the success of our developing science research program, which can be largely attributed to both the efforts of students as well as the dedicated efforts of the teacher, Mr. Zupan. Putna Valley students are lucky enough to be able to attend uh, PNW BOCES to take additional classes that are tailored more to their specific interests and career goals. Some of our students study topics like uh, like the skills and knowledge needed to be an electrician, while others choose to study medicine and nursing or arts and media. This year, we had several seniors successfully graduate last week. Additionally, one of our own Putnam Valley students, Josh Joshua Yucatel, was named salutatorian of the PNW BOCES class of 2019. We want to wish all of our fellow classmates a sincere congratulations. In addition to the BOCES graduation, we have another, another very important set of ceremonies going on in the next week. Starting with some of our youngest students, there will be a fourth grade moving up ceremony next Tuesday, the 25th, at the Putnam Valley Elementary School. On the same day, our eighth graders will be the focus of another ceremony as they move on to be Come incoming ninth graders next September. Finally, the graduation ceremony for the Putnam Valley class of 2019 will be held tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the high school turf. These milestones are huge accomplishments in all of our students' lives and represent the large amount of work that they have continued to put into their academic studies. We wish them all luck in their future endeavors. That being said, Sonia and I would like to wish all of our students, teachers, administrators, and staff a wonderful summer with it, filled with excitement for next year. Thank you. And girls, on behalf of the Board of Education, thank you for your contribution to us and for giving us a chance to watch you all grow into who you've become. <laughs> Can't wait to see what's next for both of you. Okay. I don't see Christina Casey, but is there a PTA, PTSA representative out there? Okay. So then it's all you, Dr. Left. I'm going to skip, except for the one thing that I wanted to say is um, I know tonight is Dr. Will's last uh, board meeting, and I had the opportunity to speak um, and MC her retirement party. And part of my speech spoke a little bit about what it's like uh, following a legacy and naming a bunch of people you've never heard of who followed really famous people that everyone's heard of. Um, and I must admit, I, some, I feel like I fit in that category there. Um, but I, it's been a tremendous opportunity to learn from her and to work alongside her for the last two years. And that all, I'm still not sure I'm ready to get into what I'm about to start in a week. Um, I, I certainly would not be where I am today if it wasn't for her. So I just wanted to publicly thank her for her mentorship, her leadership for the district, and certainly her friendship for the last two years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Luff. Um, and I have very much enjoyed collaborating and working with you uh, because, as uh, I mentioned earlier, I have this belief that, um, that we learn from other minds, other ways of thinking. And Dr. Luft's mind is very different from mine. He's a physics, was a physics teacher. I'm a humanities person. And um, so he sees things differently, and that's good. It's very good for the district to have different minds looking at, and, and, and looking at you know, where we are and where our students are. The one thing I think we all want is we want heart. Uh, and Dr. Luft has that, and uh, he will continue the work we're doing in terms of teaching about empathy, thinking about how we support each other, and building teams uh, that care about each other. And um, so I believe that we're in very good hands, and I look forward to um, hearing about the district, to coming to the plays, and I know they're doing, um, for the drama next year, they're doing Almost Maine, which mm -hmm. oh, nice. very, much about where I lived for 25 years. So, almost. Um, almost. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, there, there are many things that I hope to come back to. I, I hope to sponsor, help to sponsor the One Act Plays again. I think that was one of our most, you know, most creative uh, and ambitious undertakings this year. 
And when you see the plays, which are now on our website, posted on our website through YouTube, you really see the depth of our students' um, abilities, the depth of their thinking and how they see the world. And uh, we've learned never to underestimate what our youth can do. And they bring us things that, they bring us ideas, they bring us views that um, we're amazed at that awe we're inspired by because they see the world differently too. And um, our second goal, I didn't get to through the goals, but our second goal this year was personalizing learning and bringing voice. And we've done that in many, many ways. Start reading again. <laughs> <laughs> and we love to laugh. We must laugh. We must have a sense of humor because that keeps us all, oh, it keeps us humble. And being humble is very, very important to, to me. It's, it's humility is, you know, it, it's what makes us human and was, uh, what allows us to, um, to share with others and to feel with others. So um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things in my report. Um, the walk through the elementary school, which was just absolutely beautiful. And um, it was for me a very emotional and beautiful experience, uh, the walk of our graduates. Um, also, uh, I want to invite the community to participate in the community read, and, and we'll be sending out more and more information on that. But uh, we're going to have one of the sessions right here in this library on July 31st. And this is for anyone in the community, everyone, plus our own staff, to talk about a book. And the book was chosen through a representative community group getting together uh, in the public library here. And it's Into the Beautiful North. And it deals with um, with a, a migrate the migration uh, to the United States by very specific people who yearn to find a family member who has come to this country and they have not heard from them again. And um, it's it's really a very tender story. It's also funny. Uh, it's very colorful, and I think it will open our minds again in a good way. Uh, and it's wonderful to see the work that the public library here is doing in the community. It's really becoming a real link uh, and bringing people together, which is what we're all trying to do, bring people together. Also, I just mentioned that Hope for Youth, which does a lot of work for our students, is having a race uh, at Graymoor this, um, this Saturday, uh, a 5K and a 3K walk. And uh, we hope that we'll have people registering from this community to, to participate in this in this wonderful effort. So that's it for me. Superintendent's report. Thank oh, you all. I, just, I am tremendously share. grateful. Um, I would like to open it up now for public I've got a little a little choked up there. I'd like to open it up for um, public contribution on any of the agenda items. Are you walking up to publicly contribute? <laughs> <laughs> Contribute, sorry. Contribute, I like that. That's very fancy. <laughs> very okay. fancy. Travis is contributing now. Good evening, everyone. So uh, I'd like to speak this evening uh, on behalf of the retirement of Dr. Fran Wills. Um, she has a very special place in my heart. Um, if many of you don't know, I began my journey to become an administrator six years ago. And I stand before you this evening to share with you that Dr. Wills is a lifelong educator. Um, six years ago when Liz Barrett Turner and I started our journey through the Bank Street College FSLA program, uh, we were under the guidance of Dr. Newsy at the time. And as many of you know, Dr. Newsy left the district and Liz and I met that summer with our new incoming interim superintendent. And I'll never forget sitting down with Fran and just the look in her eye and the aspirations she had for this district. And Liz and I had no idea what we were getting into at the time <laughs> because we were teachers within the district. And Fran had all these ideas and really said to us, you know, we're going to have a lot of work for you to do. And she took us under her wings and we knew at that time that she was just a leader for us. She trusted us. She put us to work for two years as administrative interns, and quickly we learned what it meant to prioritize and to collaborate. This experience helped us to prepare 
um, to become the leaders that we are today in a journey that both of us had no idea what the future would hold. Fran embodies all the qualities that it takes to oversee an entire district and community. Some of the ideas and programs that she helped bring to the middle school um, were after school booster lab funded by the Hope for Youth Foundation, who I heard she's gonna be a part of uh, in the future. Uh, our Mandarin Chinese program, our student of the month breakfast where parents are now invited, bring the community in, block scheduling, and numerous safety protocols to just name a few. She can be seen in every building working with staff members, students, almost every single day. Fran, I can't thank you enough for being invested in PV and our children. The growth that you've brought to the district is greatly appreciated. You've writ your written language, vocabulary, scholarly approach is something that we all strive for. Your thirst for knowledge and fearless approach to be current on difficult topics that surround us is unprecedented. I've learned that one only grows when they are challenged, sometimes when they're uncomfortable, and to always look for ways to improve. You've made me a better educator and leader, and I'm forever grateful to have been able to work with you and learn from your vast expertise. And I just wanted to thank you personally for this journey that you've helped me on, and you will be greatly missed. Thank you, thank you Fran. I, I, I do because I know we're going to get to item 10. I don't know if we're actually going to read it or not because we just read it twice. We already read it. But um, um, I give Fran a lot of guff. <laughs> a lot. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to try and keep her honest too. Um, but, you know, we, everybody's talking about her, and I agree that she's a great leader, a great teacher. I'm always looking up words when she's speaking to find out what she's actually saying. <laughs> Inspiration, a visionary, and a mentor. But more than all of that, and you know, what keeps coming back to me, friend, you're an extraordinary, exceptional human being. The, you know, the, the passion, the compassion, the feel that you have for everybody. Parents, students, family members, everybody. And, and that is the thing that stands out to me more than anything else is the size of your heart and where your heart is and you truly will be missed. Thank you. Not that I really can handle anymore. Does yeah. anybody else have anything else you'd like to add? Please. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I, I end with the students. I've, I thought about sharing this at different times, so I'm going to jump in and share it. Um, uh, not too long ago, I read a book by Sean Acor, Big Potential, How Transforming the Pursuit of Success Raises Our Achievement, Happiness, and Well-Being. A few pages in, and I'm thinking, Fran could have wrote this book. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking through it. Uh, Sean Acor says, real success in work and in life comes from your connections and relationships. The teams you build around you and the friends you make. And I know Fran totally believes that. He talks about force multipliers and describes a force multiplier as an object or person in your environment that exponentially increases your power to accomplish far greater things than you could alone. To me, that describes Fran in so many ways. Um, at the end of the book, he talks about a warrior tribe of Kenya, some of the fiercest and most intelligent fighters in history. When they greet each other, they don't say, how are you? They say, how are the children? And the response, even from those without children, is all the children are well. The belief is that things can't be fully good for one individual unless the whole community is thriving. And I just wanted to say, Dr. Wills, you are a force multiplier. And because of your leadership, the children of Putnam Valley are well. Thank you. I have no words, really, at this point. I, I feel um, very, very emotionally moved by everything tonight. 
Um, and I have since I started here because every day has been one in which I have seen a child who has grown, a child who has, has, is so special. I remember Fatima. And I remember every time I'd come into the school how she would greet me. Fatima is with us today. Um, she, she left us, but she is with us in her uh, beautiful soul. And um, that's the kind of thing that happens um, when you have the privilege of working with children and being in schools. Uh, and it is a privilege. I see this as something, and I've talked to my administrators about it for all of us, to have this opportunity to be working with kids in this way. We are the luckiest people to have jobs in schools, to be educators. Uh, there is, uh, at this particular time, in partic for me, just to know that I'm in a school and that we can teach people about how to be decent to one another, how to be kind to one another, how to treat each other with respect, and that we can practice it here, that is to me a privilege. So. And one of Fran's legacies is always we end and lead with student voice. So girls, did you want to mm -hmm. say something? Um, yeah, I kind of just did want to say something just because I think a lot of educators really go into education and administration wanting to have an impact on children, uh, especially as well as other things within a district, but especially having an impact on children. So um, I think it's important to share like a student's point of view on how uh, you, Dr. Wills, have had an impact on all of the students in our school. And I do want to say that um, through adding all of the programs and improvements to the school that you've made in just six years. I mean, the district has changed so much and all of these different programs you've added have not only had a distinct impact on my life and have cha has changed it really forever. It's changed where I'm going to college. It's changed, you know, um, what I'm interested in. It's changed really a huge part of my life right now. And I'm sure that for the rest of the student body, that's also true in other disciplines, not just the science research program, which you helped to start, really started. Um, you've started so many things here that have had so many impacts on the entire student body, and I just wanted to thank you for that and tell you that, like, if your original goal was to really impact students, you've definitely done that. Um, I'd also like to say you also had a great impact on me as well. Like, I'm so proud to say that I'm a part of Putnam Valley High School. We do so many things that no other schools would think about. Like the one act plays, that was such a creative piece, or like bringing in Arcadian Wild. Like no one, no other school could have a student just like go up and be like, oh, can we do this? But like, no, you were like allowed that to happen. And I just hear so many like good things about the school and how you don't, you can do, what's it called? You have such like a broad perspective on everything. You don't say, oh, like, no. You, you find a way, you know? You find a yeah, way to like do what No's you want. not so Ever. big Ever. <laughs> vocabulary. Ever. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. You know. <laughs> we, we could have ended with that for you. Yes. Yes. But you know what? I couldn't do any of it without my team. I couldn't do any of it, it without my administrative team. Nothing. And I couldn't do anything without the teachers being willing to do the things they're doing in the schools. And it, it, it can't be done when, when we talked about science research, if we didn't have a teacher willing to step up and do this. That wouldn't happen. It takes everyone here and the board to say yes. I can't do it without the board saying yes. There are many boards, and this is why I'm here for six years. And it wasn't one year, because it's about the board saying, OK, we can do this. OK, we can. And I must say, without Jill giving me the yes, poor nothing Jill. would happen, because if the pocketbook isn't open, poor, poor Jill. it doesn't happen. <laughs> but we were able to stay within the tax cap Below the tax cap. And below the tax cap. Yes, within and below the tax cap. And that is what allowed 
all of this to happen. So the fiscal foundation has to be there or you can't do anything. And I've seen where that, when that goes away, you can't do things. So we are, as I said, we are so lucky to be here in Putnam. Putnam Valley is a remarkable place. And you know, we have some new people coming in our district. A new assistant principal will be here. We have a new teacher who's here tonight to meet the board, a new counselor. And they are aware that they're coming into a place where, they're, where people say yes, where people say, Yes, we will. Yes, a lot we, of the time. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time. <laughs> Almost always. Okay. Just remember that all next year, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, is we can. Is somebody taping this? <laughs> Weren't taking But no, it, it is remarkable, and we are very proud of. I remember when we interviewed Fran, um, we said for the last three hires, we've said we've on the verge of greatness. Well, I believe that we are at greatness, and we now get to reach for more. <laughs> now we have to do new business, and I need to go lay down. I'm very emotional. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I can't. Uh, moving on to new business. Um, number one, Mr. Ferraro, start us off. It's an upper here. Um, whereas Judge James writes, mm -hmm. Served as Putnam County Court Judge since 2007, as well as an acting state Supreme Court Judge, impacting the lives of many in the Putnam Valley community. And whereas the Putnam Valley Central School District would like to recognize Judge Wright's, Judge Wright's for his reads for his years of service and honor his memory, due to the profound impact that he has had on the lives of many. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby honors John Wrights for his work on behalf of the community and students of Putnam Valley Central School District and his concern for their well-being and rehabilitation as the ethos of his judicial responsibility. Second, questions or comments? Uh, I would just like to say that um, I know that um, Barbara Parmley went to the funeral and um, I stood on the line to get in, I couldn't get in because I couldn't stand more than an hour and a half um, that day. But around me were thousands of people, and I heard them, and I talked to the people online. It was a, it was sort of a way we'd have conversations on the line, and the conversations were about he saved my child, he saved my family, his program of diversion, his program of his drug court saved my life and our lives. This man was, uh, was a visionary who cared about people in this community and uh, created this, this drug court, this court of rehabilitation that really was remarkable. Uh, and uh, he will be very, very greatly missed in this county. And uh, I think it's wonderful that the board is passing a resolution tonight to honor him and honor his uh, his family. We will send this resolution to his to his wife, um, and um, let's hope that we can find um, another s kindred spirit to support what has become a terrible epidemic, a terrible killer epidemic in in this region in this nation. So, thank you to the board for this resolution. Um, uh, Natalie dragged me to. Uh, <laughs> She dragged me to this. He started this court improvement project, Dr. Wright, I mean, Judge Wright. Um, so Natalie said, well, let's go. So I was like, well, OK. So we're the only school people there. Um, Natalie abandoned me. I, I'm still the only school person there. Um, but I'm proud of doing that. I several times said to Judge Reitz, I, I really think that I don't belong because, you know, like no, they're all psychologists or social workers or something else all dealing with the court and I'm you know not and he's like no he made not only touch the lives of children by his programs but made everybody that worked with him never under him but with him um, feel like they were valued important part of the process and that's a real gift 
Um, our teachers have it. Um, make students feel at home, welcome. Um, the judge had it also, and I'm, I'm glad that we're going to send this to his family. All in favor. Aye. 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 Number two. Resolved on recommendation of the superintendent of schools to appoint Sasha Babula mm -hmm. to a four-year probation. I'm sorry, to a four-year probationary term as a special education math teacher, commencing on September 1st, 2019, and terminating on August 31st, 2020, 2023, in the tenure area of special education at the middle school on Step 2A of the PVFT salary schedule. Ms. Babulal holds students with disabilities math 7 through 12, students with disabilities 7 through 12 generalists, and math 7 through 12 professional certification. In order to be eligible for appointment to tenure, said employee must receive at least three APPR ratings of effective or highly effective during the four-year probationary term and may not receive an ineffective rating in the final year of probation. Second. Questions or comments? I just wanted to quickly um, explain the situation in which this teacher was hired. So I'm sure that you are all familiar with um, the fact that we lost power on the campus last week. And I was in the middle of dismissing the schools early because we had no power. And the road was blocked. And there was a telephone pole down and so on and so forth. And as I was walking through the middle school uh, looking for Mr. McCarty, uh, walkie-talkies blaring behind me. and um, he came out of the room quietly, and I go, what, what is going on in there? I thought, and he goes, we have a demo lesson going on. I said, you have somebody with a demo lesson? There's no power in the building. We're about to dismiss the school. She goes, no, she insisted. She said she could do it without any power. And I, I did not meet her until this evening, and as soon as I met her, I was like, wow, you're going to be a great teacher. <laughs> if you could figure out how to do a demo lesson in the classroom with a bunch of kids with no electricity, with no PowerPoint, because you had to write all of them on the chart paper, that's a pretty good start. So I just wanted to give you that. Absolutely. We did several rounds. I just have to say, we did several rounds, and, and, and Mr. McCarty and I um, and, and Dr. Mohuka were determined not to, to settle on a candidate. And when we, as soon as we found uh, this incredible teacher, we were, we were thrilled. So, welcome. All in favor? We have to Aye. say the all in favor Aye. part. Aye. Aye. And now you have to come up and take our hands. Number three. Resolved on recommendation of superintendent of schools to appoint Kendall Mraz Coleman to a four-year probationary term as a school counselor commencing on September 1st, 2019 and terminating on August 31st, 2023 in a tenure area of guidance at the middle school on step one of the PVFT salary schedule. Ms. Mraz Coleman holds school counselor provisional certification. In order to be eligible for appointment to tenure, said employee must receive at least three APPR ratings of effective or highly effective during the four-year probationary term and may not receive an ineffective rating in the final year of probation. Second. Questions or comments? We um, all have had the uh, honor of working with, um, with Ms. Uh, Ms. Coleman this year. Uh, she actually took on the caseload of Mr. Campion, who was away, uh, you know, for medical reason, and um, I know that Dr. Intrieri felt that this was <laughs> the best possible solution to what is a very difficult issue when you have guidance at the high school. But uh, also, Ms. Coleman worked at the middle school. Uh, she was a teaching assistant and also worked with uh, as a counselor during certain times during the during the year. And um, we have seen excellent work. She also took on all kinds of assignments that uh, we gave her, including the biliteracy seal, working on that with the teachers. And um, she is, has all the qualities that we love to see in a counselor, both uh, personal qualities 
and uh, the ability to think quickly and to search and find and look for ways to connect kids. She connects very well. When I observed her lesson, um, I heard some of the students say, oh, she's my friend. She really likes me. And they had, didn't know her that well, but they had made that connection. She had made that connection with them. And uh, the lesson was about empathy, and uh, Ms. Coleman goes into classrooms uh, to work on a number of social-emotional uh, areas with students. So we're very glad she's here. All in favor? Aye. 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 You have to walk up your name. to you, Mr. Ferraro, for number four. It's all the recommendation of superintendent of schools to accept the risk assessment update for fiscal year 2018-19 and the recommended audit plan for January 2019 from McCune Partners as per document 187-19, attached to the agenda and official minutes of this meeting. Second. Questions or comments? What we are doing on this update is we're just adding, they just added uh, requirements about the uh, capital project that we're having and the construction that's going on. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same document. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number five. Uh, resolution. Is that this? Wait a minute. Yes, two votes. Okay. So, the subject is a, is a resolution authorizing the Putnam Valley Central School District, Putnam and Westchester Counties, New York, to pay the cost of the construction of additions to and reconstruction of school district buildings and to construct a new health and wellness center at the high school at a maximum estimated cost of 14810000 and authorizing issuance of 14200000 serial bonds of said school district to pay a portion of the cost thereof. And the recommended action, the details of the recommended action are as they appear in the agenda. Question, oh. Second. Sec yeah. Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Questions or comments? This is just a continuation of the bond vote which we had last December. We're now going on to process it. The only reason we're not reading it, it's about EA Wall. Yes. 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 It's easier than I thought. That was a lot easier than we thought. Number six. Mr. Resolve Cohen. to accept a proposal from Dante Engineering for geotechnical investigations related to the 2018 capital project as per document 199-19 attached to the agenda and official minutes of this meeting. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number seven. Resolved on the recommendation of Superintendent of Schools to accept a generous donation in the amount of $800 from Dr. Pathak, Pathak? Mm -hmm. yes. of Envision Dental Care of Putnam Valley, New York, as a sponsorship for the 2019 Summer Reading Challenge. Second. Questions or comments? I just want to mention that this is an, a, a very generous donation from a dentist who has a practice in our town, in, in Putnam Valley. And uh, he has donated to this wonderful summer reading program that we have that engages students throughout the summer in a reading, pro reading progress. And uh, this is wonderful. It provides for the, the awards that students get for the reading. And uh, it's a very generous do donation of $800. So thank you, Dr. Pathak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number eight. Resolved on recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the first reading, waiving the second reading of revisions to policy 6053, fund balance and reserve funds, as per document number 190-19, attached to the agenda and official minutes of this meeting. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number nine. Resolved to adjust the following authorized restricted reserves up to the following amounts. Teacher retirement system, 
district retirement contribution reserve sub fund up to 2% of the total compensation or salaries of all teachers employed by the district who are eligible members of the TRS paid during the immediate, immediately preceding fiscal year. Tax tertiary reserves, ED3651, up to the addition of $300,000 dollars but no more than the total existing outstanding judgment or claims arising out of the tax associated proceedings three the employee benefit and accrual li liability reserve gml 6-p up to an additional three hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollars but no more than the amount in total equal to the liability of all employees accrued benefits due to an employee upon retirement determination Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 10. Whereas Dr. Fran Wells has provided dedicated service, leadership, and guidance to the Putnam Valley Central School District since August 1st, 2013, strengthening the district's academic programs and providing a well-rounded educational experience for all students to ensure that they leave school prepared and committed to lead and serve in their community and society. And whereas Dr. Will's employment agreement with the district as superintendent of schools concludes on June 30th, 2019, now therefore be resolved that the Board of Education of the Putnam Valley Central School District hereby recognizes Dr. Will's years of dedicated service, hard work and commitment to this school district and its students and wishes her good health, happiness and contentment in the ensuing years. Second. Questions or comments? I'll just say thank you once again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to the consent agenda, number one. Resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve consent agenda items two through 18. Second. Questions or comments? We're approving CSE CPSE placements. We're approving additions to the substitute tutor list. We're approving summer hours for staff members, for the office staff, for clerical workers, for the cleaners, custodians, and for the computer specialists. We're approving a contract with the city, the city school district of New Rochelle for three students and the Union Free S School District of Tarrytown for three students who attend non-public schools in their district. We're approving the AP proctors and regents and final exam proctors for children who have special needs. We're approving special education program AC, ASEP, ASAP. We're approving a contract for the reset program, which originally was for the New Rochelle College, but is now gonna be administered and helped by the Mercy College. We're approving the postseason coach, coaches additional stipends for the varsity softball and the track and field because their pro programs had additional um, activities after the regular seasons. We're approving additional hours for staff members at the middle school who participated in the school advisory committee. We're approving the extended school year staff and summer hours for the ENL, English as a new language program team. And we're accepting an agreement of settlement between the district and a Putnam Valley family. We're approving days without pay for one employee. And we're approving additional hours for two employees for summer curriculum work with respect to the workshops he coordinated and for another teacher for preparing IEPs, at, but her work is gonna be paid for by a grant. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to open it up to public um, comment on any topic. I just have one quick announcement. Yes. Our next board yes. meeting is gonna be yes. July yes. 2nd, which is a Tuesday, yes. not a Thursday. Yes. It'll be a Tuesday, and that'll be the reorganization meeting. So it'll be held on July 2nd, Tuesday. Okay, and I would like now um, resolution resolved to convene an executive session oh, for public, public hmm? comment. On any? I, did I say public comment? Yes. Yes. And then yes. Mr. Cohen had public comment. Oh, okay. Any other public comment? Okay. Um, I'd like to convene an executive session for to discuss two matters of the employment history of two particular persons and one manner leading to the appointment of one particular person, after which no further business will be conducted. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 
happy graduation, girls, and happy graduation to all of our seniors, and enjoy your summer. Be careful out there. <laughs>